Hello everybody, welcome to the first semi-final of the Blood Bowl 3 Chalice. We have Spiritor Log with 2.4 million Nurgle versus Eliod with 2.5 million Dark Elf. Um, so only 100 TV difference, so we'll probably, we'll probably see a bribe, I imagine, or something. Um, and in the booth with me is Squirrel Dude. Hello! Hello, do you know if Spiritor Log was willing to dump any money into inducements? I guess we could see that. In a little bit but, they're um, not allowed to ah okay <laughs> if I mean, he that's... if he was he I... would <laughs> yeah i i understand why that's against the rules but also i mean that's it shouldn't actually be against the rules that would put the overdog to spend money but that's the current state of what uh, yeah i mean it would be really hard right they would have to they would have to think of some rules for the tournament so so this yeah. tournament is happening um, in friendly games. First of all, we're watching this on the VOD of Elliot's channel. Um, I'll link in the description. We, there is no Cabal Vision, there's no replays. We are just having to watch the replay of the stream. I have put it on double speed so that it won't be quite as tedious. Um, and second of all, they are having to do the tournament by playing friendlies with each other um, and streaming it to make sure there's no shenanigans. I guess the tournament organizers could have thought of some way of doing inducements like, you know, house rolling, you know, rules about inducements and stuff. But the fact that it was, uh, you know, resurrection and stuff, it's it's because you can't run tournaments in the actual game. You, um. Yeah, <laughs> you have to be tracking it separately, the amount of money people had, basically, um, yeah. how much money they spent. And so until their bank that got, got down to zero or something or roll money additionally, you'd have to have some entirely separate out of game treasury tracking system, which would be miserable for the admins and also miserable for the players to be checking between rounds. Exactly. Um I mean if you're allowed to like top up, then Spirit or Log would have topped up. Like that's uh that's not the new rules, is it actually in the new rules you can't top up at all. But like if you're allowed to top up then Spirit or Log would have probably topped up a biased ref. Um, but instead he was a hundred down exactly so he just gets a bribe as predicted because he can't get an apothecary he could have got two babes i guess and he might need two babes because Elliot does have three sneaky get dirty players which is a bit excessive isn't it, <laughs> it was not excessive but um it just shows how crazy blood bowl three is with uh sneaky git it's super powerful and Elliot has three sneaky get dirty players uh four guarders and a Jugs Witch, amongst other things. Spirit or Log has eight um, guard, eight tackle. Um, no, eight, eight guard, eight mighty blow claws, and lots of tackle. He hasn't got eight, but he's got lots of tackle. Mm. So he does have claws, which I suppose you still get in this game, but they're not quite as strong as they used to be. So they're still okay in this matchup. I'm not sure they do anything against Armor Body Weight anymore. Ever get the specific change to the rules? Um, yeah, the, 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 so against Armour 8, if they roll an 8 to break AV, they will get plus 1 on the injury. So they do they do, do something, but yeah, they're, no, they're nowhere near as good as they are. They used to be. And um, no, not El Elliot, no, um, Spirit Orlog has the equivalent of a Blood Bowl to Mr. Page's team. Elliot is elves. Yeah. So he can use his big brain to beat all of the mindless bash players. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll give it to the Nurgle team. It doesn't look like it needs another 200 team value of development, which is pretty rare. It looks like it has the right amount of, amount of skills on the core players, which is exceedingly <laughs> rare for Nurgle teams. Yes, yeah, this is an absolutely brilliant Nurgle team. Um, obviously, versus Bash teams, it's it's completely amazing. Oh my god, this was a terrible, terrible play by Spirit Orlog, though. Did, did he know that he had frenzy on this guy? <laughs> like he was a guarantee. It was a guaranteed necro blitz versus a dude with a million, a million dirty player sneaky guts. Yeah, that was not, that was not good. Especially since you had the one with tackle, mighty blow, and claw, and not frenzy, just right there. Yeah, yeah, that was. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna guess like you are that the foul is gonna happen though. <laughs> yep, yes. Yep. Oh shit! I'll, uh, I'll share the thing. The thing. Sorry. Um, yes, obviously, obviously the foul comes in. There we go, right, there's the, uh... Yeah, with double the... speed there's a, perhaps a bit more... But... Yeah, because the yeah. double speed does leave you quite far behind sometimes. But, you know, obviously this was cast live, so there's a lot of thinking time that... And the, the, the animations aren't too crazy, right, for the double speed, like... They're obviously not mm -hmm. right, but they're not, they're not terrible. No, I mean, Double Speed always makes stuff look weird. Um, you see that when people try and make cars or something and films look like they're going faster, it's running on fast forward, it just never looks quite right. 
Oh man, Death Race, that was amazing. <laughs> I was thinking of Samurai Cop where they do the same thing with the stupid van, just doing these like really these pen these pen uh, yeah, pen turns, and it's like, uh, no, <laughs> that thing is not going eighty miles an hour in the suburbs doing these tight turns. <laughs> Please turn off the fast forward. Hmm. Superior elf bash strategy, yeah. I mean that that's the craziest thing, right? That elves can now out bash bash teams quite easily, like quite easily with sneaky get dirty player. Because you know, before you, they, in Blood Bowl two and that they would try and you know they would try and uh, play off as much as possible, right? Trade blitz for blitz. But now that they're, they're trading blitz for blitz, plus they can trade huge sneaky get dirty player fouls. <laughs> it's, yep. it's crazy. That, and, and also, it's really important to remind they get to trade money blow blitzes for money blow blitzes, basically. Like claws a little bit better, but elves have very easy access to money blow compared to level two. So it's very much, especially in a matchup which is really AV8 versus AV8 across much of the team, the attrition is going to be similar. Yep, yep. It's cr it's it's really crazy. And Sneaky Kid, I mean Sneaky Kid is so good. It's actually so good. But elves are dead, Jim. Elves are so bad now. <laughs> Look I at heard that. everyone say they're not. El Elliot's risking a blood step guard defensive player to protect his Sneaky Kid dirty mm. player. That's that's how that's how much he rates it. I mean that is unbelievable, isn't it? Wow, there was an instant. Uh, there was a foul, foul. First action foul. Sent off. He didn't even use the bribe. Oh, he, he um, argued he the argued. call, and it was uh, a success, it but it's still a turnover. Yes. And, and that is actually probably worth it because the ball's safe. Ish. Mm. And that and is the rules. Put a bit of pressure on, but that's it. Yeah, that is the rules. Uh, they didn't. I thought they might have got that wrong. So I did read the rules and made sure um, that that is correct. But, I mean, it does invite a bit of pressure from Elliot, doesn't mm -hmm. it? There might be stats in play. We can't see the stats. I believe the Pestigore is movement 8. The Pestigore with the ball is movement 8. Uh, one of the Pestigores is AV9+, plus as well, it looked like. Mm -hmm. and so that's always correct. It had a little white highlight on the bar. So, Did you get another removal of that foul? Yes, you did. <laughs> I'll regen though. This is a little bit fast, isn't it? It is a little bit fast. One point five might be. Yeah. Might be better. Yeah. We had uh, we had them double speed for like the dwarf matches. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. It's a bit harder with a team that actually moves around and does stuff, and they aren't just mindlessly two guys walking for turn after turn after turn and then conceding. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it, to be, and also, to be fair, the fact it's Blood Bowl 3 makes it harder to see. Um, so, yeah, I mean, the, you can see the yellow, the squiggly line is dodge, the foot is mm -hmm. sidestep, so, you know, and, and with the with the Nurgle, every, it's pretty easy, right? You've got block, mighty blow, guard, claw, and pretty much everybody. <laughs> and then the blue foot is tackle, yeah. Yeah. I've been able to mostly figure it out by relearning it all. Um, it's just been tracking where the sneaky gets going and when the fouls are been going. It's been a bit tricky because Blood Bowl 3 still isn't quite great at showing when things are happening. No, it's, think, it's um, terrible at that. It's, it's, it's terrible speeds. at a lot of things. It, it's it, Honestly, like, this is, like, you know, you can tell what they are. Like, they work in terms of you can tell what they are, but just look at this mess of them all together. Like, it's it's basically impossible to read, even though even though you know what they are and you know what everything is. It's just ugly and it's bad. And it's, uh, it's garish is the word I would use for it. Yeah, there's no, there's no excuse saying you'll get used to it. That is not a that is not an argument to use. Could have made this a three D on that guy that was in front. Might have been better than yeah. Two D. The, uh, the unskilled guy, yeah, would be pretty mm. nice because you get you got in the knockdown now, so you've got an armor hit now. And... Yep. If the I fact that was... Elliot's bouncing over him is probably mm. the thing. Why didn't he blitz this guy? <laughs> Wait, what happened there? He just chose a he... skull. No, no, he re-rolled into uh, dub skulls. I oh, re-rolled into dub skulls. It's really hard to tell anything that's happened. <laughs> I used the word garish before, but you have to be more descriptive. It's like it's like a, a clown vomited all over the screen with the amount of colors that are around here. It is, yeah, yeah. Well, it's it's because of the limited colors that that like that's what makes it look worse, right? Like at least in Blood Bowl two, you had like um, you know, Glorious. it was different Glorious. palette, wasn't it? There were, things were slightly different and stuff. Whereas here, everything's all the same, so it's just. And I will defend. It's just. I will defend. It doesn't make it into like a mass. Hello. More of a mass like vomit, isn't it? That's that's what it does. And hello, Fimea, thank you very much. Staying fantastic for 42 glorious months. Oh, yeah. 
Oh, Pogler genuinely thought that the min menus were all placeholders as well. I wish I had shared that with you. <laughs> wish I'd shared that optimism, but I, I thought from the start it was, uh, it was not good. So you have to push. I thought the menus were actually. I still think the menus are a step up, but that's probably because the menus in Blood three are bad and are, were always bad. But um. And are a wonderful example of why designing games for both console and PC can be extremely challenging, and maybe not the most ideal plan. Mm. I mean, the color—it's the colors, right? The, the, when, when, like the menu functionality, it's not the best, but you know, you know, like I wouldn't expect it to be the best because it's Blood Bowl and it's cyanide, right? So yeah, <laughs> I just argue Blood Bowl two in regards to the challenges of the design there, but yeah, the colors in Blood Bowl three are aren't quite ideal. No, they're horrendous. So is this a 1 into a 2, is it? I think it might have been. It might have been a 1 into uh, a 1, I'm not sure. Hard to tell. It was, he, I think it was a 1 into a 1 because there were two guards on the top and he's going to get two more assists on the push. So, well, he, he yeah. might not have even been able to get the follow-up block because he might have been tentacled. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, right. Oh, wait, is the beast? No, the beast is standing up. God, the beast is, because of its stupid body, is kind of hard to see. It looks like it's laying down from this angle. Almost. Mm. Like, you can see it, right? The way you could just see that being a player laying down with its stupid fat body laying on its side or something. <laughs> yes. Yeah, no, yeah. I agree. Well, there you go. Elliot's got the ball. On turn It'd four. Be not too, it'd be a little tricky to protect it, but not too hard. No, he's just hard from dodging it. to get after it. He's just leaving it. I mean, he's yeah. got six rerolls as well, so it's kind of surprising because he's, you know, he had rerolls for everything there, didn't he? Maybe he's thinking about where he's going to sidestep, but that seems weird to not do the extra dodge off with six rerolls. <laughs> Taking the purple chest advice to heart of get more rerolls in this edition and mm. seeing how many it, how many more. You have. I mean, I've always, I've always had cheap rerolls there, right? It's only fifty k for them, so yeah, it's really good value for them. Yeah, it's interesting, right? It's it, 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 it's super interesting because it's a bit different with redraft. Because if there's a redraft at some point, then you also might as well buy more rerolls. You know, maybe it's not this many, but obviously with this being infinite bowl and no redrafts or anything, and getting to two thousand five hundred TV, then yeah, obviously you go up to like six rerolls or whatever. He's got the biggest TV in the tournament, Eliod. So yeah. once you're the biggest TV, why wouldn't you add more? <laughs> yeah, it's max max. Yeah, max max. Oh wow, the uh, beast's gone stupid. Never, it's so reliable, it's so good against elves, Jim. Oh yeah, that's what everyone everyone tells me, that the beast's good against elves. <laughs> Guess what, it isn't always good against elves. That was a horrendous turn for Spirit or Log, previous one, wasn't it? Yeah. Or like a great one for Elliot, I mean this is just brutal. Okay, so it showed up and using the dodge when he actually used the sidestep skill because the UI is weird. I was confused there for a moment. Yes. Yeah, I was it, working it that out. Yeah, I was like, wait a minute. I, he has tackle, right? Yeah, he has tackle. Why is it saying he used the dodge skill? Because he, I guess it did. And uh, It's level two's nightmare all over again. He uses dodge. He uses tackle. This is on manual to see if you're a moron. Great. <laughs> Yes, I hated that, yeah. So maybe the reason Elliot didn't dodge away was for this sidestep direction, seeing as he had to dodge with that guy anyway to hit him. Yeah. Because of the guard. So, so yeah, that makes maybe sense. Maybe, I guess he could have done the GFI, though, to be like behind it, so it would be a 4 plus dodge or something. Maybe there was, maybe that play was available. If he had moved um, down one and to the right, maybe I think all the dodges were 4 pluses out to get to him, and maybe that would have been... Yeah, I would. Have, I would have. Thought. That's what I mean. That's what I would have wanted to do. But yeah, um, or maybe then this guy could have. No, he couldn't hit him. <laughs> Weird that he had six rerolls and didn't do that extra one. I, I, I would have done. I'm pretty sure. But yeah, now it's uh, now it should be plain sailing almost. Really odd here. This should be a score. Yeah, it's basically his offensive drive now. Mm. And the Nurgle are all out of position. Oh. Oh, nearly, nearly spoke too soon. Don't say it's over. <laughs> Perfect to use that line in an Elliot match. Mm -hmm. but yeah, I, but I yes, guess there is like Blood the Bowl beast. where a one and 
1,296 chance for like, I don't know, it was nearly, it was nearly horrible, it was so close. <laughs> The beast is a bit of a factor, right? If he if he can if he can uh, like like you know as much as the, uh, I you know the meme on the beast, um, there is a chance, right? If he can like block people, blitz people out of the way, then maybe he can get the beast on the ball. Like that's pretty much the only chance he's got. Yeah. But this now is, he's now uh, that tentacles are worse generally, but it is specifically better for situations like this where you get the ball, get tentacles on the ball, or on a key player. Um, so the defender can't re-roll the dodge out or re-roll the tentacles. So, correct. It yes. Specifically, is better at these moments. Yep. Oh. And I mean now, obviously, he's out of range of the beast, and it's a super strong double cage anyway. So. Yeah. Absolutely no chance of the beast getting in this turn. Well, Yard will want to stall, and I think that's correct. to want to stall. Oh yeah. Stand, you've got Stan Firm's a random there. Elliot, Elliot experimented with taking random strength for skills on elves, which is kind of okay, right? Um, it's probably oh, depending on how much it, everything with taking random and cycling players is always dependent on how many games you want to play and how much you how much money you have in your treasury because it does it can speed you up and have good benefits, but it can also really slow you down and force you to play a whole lot of games so mm. it's a little complicated it is yeah entirely format dependent and stuff well spirit or log has not really slaughtered Elliot has he two cars two KOs uh, he'd be hoping for more damage than this and yeah. he's lost the ball <laughs> Elliot there might are, just score here, I don't know. No, he, he won't. There, are, there aren't too many L's. He has gotten some removals, but um, Elliot has a bunch of spares because why not? Same reason why not have a bunch of rerolls. And then Herbal just don't really have the presence to and to really pressure this. L's are happy. would rather be playing a 6-on-6 six six game than 11-on-11 11 11 most times anyway. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, he's, he's completely out of range of the beast, so he's definitely going to stall one more turn. Yeah. Funny after after having a go at the beast, it is literally the only the only chance of sto stopping the drivers with the beast. <laughs> well, I mean, it's more reason why you can't depend on it. And you just kind of, it's really important to leave the beast kind of central because it can't reliably pressure the elves on like a sideline or anything like that. Because if it screws up, then it's completely out of position for the rest of the game. Yeah, it, so it's you, it's just it's just indicative it's a, of like how bad this driver is how badly this driver's gone for Spiritolog, right? That yeah. that's his only hope. <laughs> yeah. It's not that it should be your only hope. It's like it's it's come to this. <laughs> yeah. The beast is a kind of, it's just an awkward player because it, it wants to be with its skills as high strength and its tentacles and like you're gonna get it's gonna get stand for most of the time. So it wants to be a safety, so it can like react, but it, it's movement for agility too. So everything it always gets stuck in an, an opportune place. Mm -mm. Always. And break tackles nerfed on it, right? That's a huge nerf to the beast of Nurgle and to the uh, death roller, especially. They're the they're the two big dodging dodging yeah. big guys. Um, absolutely. I mean, obviously mega nerf to the roller, um, but pretty bad for the beast as well. So like it wasn't. Um... It's not great for bull centaurs either, right? Because they need to be strength five to get the plus two. Correct. Yeah. Sorry. That, I mean, that was the more obvious one, right? To the strength four. Yeah. Um, it's um good for ogre. It's still fine for ogres, though. It's, it's fine, but it's still a nerf. For... It's still a nerf yeah. to ogres. They can't cage break as much as they used to. Hmm. Still bad for still bad for ogres. Wow, he's not putting somebody out there. He's got to put someone out here. Yeah. Okay. There we go. Wow. I don't think he needed to put it there, but. Break tackle definitely one of the skills that was least that, whose changes was least liked and most broadly least liked by the community because it just made the skill less interesting. Yeah, oh, he's surfing it. Yeah, that was, that I mean, that was a pretty, pretty bad place yeah, so, to put it. To be fair, yeah, and that is a movement. Yeah, fast things to go. So. 
I think Elliot's going to be players up with uh, KO rules being equal heading into the next draft. It's mm. going to be or very, very even. Yeah, maybe. Why is he going there? Uh, oh, okay. Uh, okay, yeah. I still think maybe he could have been one up, but it's, that's better after he makes the second dodge, but worse until he makes mm. it. I mean, not by much, but still. I, st I, I think it's that much not better. Do I just, well, I didn't, <laughs> doesn't make any sense. Uh, but I don't uh, think it's strong. Like I don't think it's that much stronger to be like this than it is in that square, right? So I think. No, I didn't have block. He should have gone here. Took a, he took a push on that sneaky get dirty player and was taking the book down. Oh well, yeah, that's that's just that happens. Thing. Yeah, that's just bad. Yeah, um, that's. That's definitely a player you want to get rid of <laughs> after this drive. So Elliot has two more. So. Yeah, yeah. That's the thing. It doesn't even matter if he if you get rid of. Well, he does. He's he's had five players removed, three KOs, two Kaz. So at the moment, he is still going to get. He's got five reserves, so he's still on eleven. <laughs> Fills the GFI. Save. Oh, I was going to say he's saving his rerolls for the one turn, but he's out of rerolls, and it wasn't a one turn anyway because it was his drive. So there you go. Yeah. Perfect. Also, it's so I don't think there's a one turn they're ever going to do in my lifetime. No, no correct. I mean, I was just, I was trying to make a joke, but then I was stupid instead. <laughs> <laughs> so there you go, Elliot on the full eleven still. Yep, still full eleven, but obviously all down all in quality. Yeah, yeah. Well, he's a little bit down in quality, a little bit. Yeah, two guard, two blood step guarders is uh, yeah. is pretty big, but down a witch elf. But I mean, ultimately, he's still got 11 elves and he's 1 0 up, so he can just daka daka to victory. Definitely could. I'll be disappointed if he doesn't daka, to be honest. I like that Elliot's a fan of the daka. For some well, reason, I don't think the it would be. Yeah, well, he's slowly just transforming into you, Jim. Turning to hate Blood Bowl, hate Blood Bowl three, enjoying the turns where he doesn't have to play Blood Bowl. He's just <laughs> turning into Jimmy Fantastic. Glorious. There's worse people to turn into, to be fair. <laughs> Not many. <laughs> yeah, he has been pretty sad about the state of Blood Bowl three, which is, I mean, I think that's understandable. I think everybody who streams should be pretty sad about the state of Blood Bowl three. I can't wait for the purple chest update on One World One Bubble in six months. We're like, well, this sure is the same game. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If only we had been more positive <laughs> two years ago. If only. If only. Elliot might be going for the quick score. I mean, it's six and two threes in the way, right? Like, obviously, if you get the if you get the two turn done, then uh, then you're two and up, and you you're probably good. But like, you're rolling dice, whatever happens, aren't you? That's the problem. So, I I I would definitely dagger. Yeah. I guess he's got the three kills to get banned. So I, actually, so the quick in 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 defense of the quick score. He is down two guarders, which he might get back if he quick scores. So. Hmm. Also, being up two Ogans Nurgle or Dwarves it can be a very happy place to be because you can easily, by doing nothing, you can stop them from scoring in faster than four turns. <laughs> yes, yes. Well, he, he does, does have the movement eight pass to go, right? Yeah. Oh, it's a really nice kick, anyway. Really nice. Yep. Mm -hmm. And the kicks do matter now, right? Uh, you know, Elliot's got a blood sure hands, blood step sure hands runner here, but like the runner does get the three plus PA, which does make a difference uh, now for elves. Like you know, scoring two yeah. turns, it's uh, it's pretty ropey. Uh, only being able to pass in a four plus. At best, so like you know, then it, then it turns into like a double GFI handoff. So and then you're talking like you know fives for the other ones. A real, real big nerf. Um, having a PA of four plus. But, hey, new pro did something. Look at that. 
Mm. Let him just reroll the skull. Like it's agility two, basically, isn't it? Which is kind of crazy. Yeah, the uh, it's really unfortunate what they chose to do with the passing ability. I don't. I know you're not a big fan of the passing ability because it makes the game more complicated. I wish they'd done it and made it and made players more interesting. Like I hate that broadly they just used to make players worse, yes. and then players who were already theoretically good at it good at it, which isn't what it should have been. Like I've said before, but I would have liked if like full centaurs kept their poor agility but were good at passing because they're just big strong guys so they can throw the ball really hard like mm -hmm. that would have been interesting um i talked about the pro elf catchers should just be good at passing it's the whole point of the team mm -hmm. you should get rid of the thrower and stuff like that um yeah M maybe make make mr throw a good passer why not i mean why not make mr throw actually good at throwing so he's not worthless um mm -hmm. stuff like that but they just made it so that everyone who was Basically, just made all the agility three and agility two throwers, or sorry, agility four um, throwers. Like, uh, no, yeah, agility two miss, uh, throw rows just made them better at passing. That's basically all it was there to do. Yeah, yeah, it's it, it was like I I was totally against it anyway on the terms of like it's stupid, right? If you if you if you've got one dice roll to pick up the ball and dodge and catch, like mm -hmm. if you've got one stat to govern all of those, it can also govern throwing it as well right yeah it makes sense you're simplifying things it was a real good change from blood bowl first edition to second well no sorry second edition to third edition that simplification was great but yes i also agree that even once you once you commit to that then it was still a missed opportunity in how they implemented it too yeah correct <laughs> but um and this is pretty good from Eliod. um i would say pretty good it, it could, you know, we could see a good turn from Spirit or Log. You could probably get quite a lot in front of this. Um, that Neural Warrior feels like it's going the wrong way to start things out. Don't know yeah, why. Yeah, I don't understand that. Because the other all want to be farther away from that elf. I feel like you'd want that Neural Warrior on the upper right corner of that sticky git lineman. So mm. if nothing else is next to the beast. Mm. But, you could activate the beast um, and move the other players back. Yes, that might have been an idea. But he's just trying to get something in front, isn't he? I guess he probably... Yeah. He probably... Uh, what's it called? Um, it still throws me off that um, the image for an apothecary is a bandage, and that's not the image for... So every time there's a KO, I'm like, oh, he chose, <laughs> the, K he chose the injury over the other injury, over a badly hurt, every time. Every time I see it. Yeah. Oh, t tunnel vision. That's it. Tunnel vision. Uh, find it sexist. They made the witch elf the worst passer. It's not sexist at all, Pugler. I, I know. I know that you know that, and you're just trolling. But in case anybody doesn't understand, it's because they got frenzy and they made the frenzy players worse at passing. So they made they made like the troll slayers the worst passer on dwarves. And but it is quite funny. Yes, that the, <laughs> that the witch elf is the worst at throwing. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually hilarious. <laughs> like a very easy two dice here for Elliot. He can just run an elf around and ride an assist. I don't. And he can also just blitz with the ball. He just needs a push and he can just walk the ball to the end zone, basically. So this feels really simple. Yeah, I mean it was a hard turn though, right? He had to he had yeah. to like do loads of GFIs basically. Spirit if Spirit Orlog was willing to spend all of his rerolls this turn um on millions of GFIs and probably a beast dodge and stuff, maybe he could have done something, but it was hard. It was really hard. It feels like you just um do two dice plus with your ball carry because you have two unmarked players who can do the assisting. He Sometimes could dodge like... through here and chain the tackle, like blitz the tackle, right? Mm -hmm. I think that's what he'll do. Yeah, that's what he's doing. Oh man, I'm good at blood bowl. Oh, I don't know if he needed to dodge through the uh, tackle. I don't think it mattered. No, no, he didn't. Uh, oh yeah, it didn't matter. He's, it was a sneaky kid. Did it? Yeah, the pushes here are the problem. Because the push is yes. just sneaky, so it doesn't work. Ah, uh, okay, we have side stuff, of course. That makes it easier. Now it's just a, another two plus. And you can, I think you can get it, just get in now. Yeah, I think but, you do just get in. I don't think you stall this. 
No, yeah. but it, it was nice that it gave him the chance of uh, made him gave him mm-hmm. the chance of getting him dodge on the dodge. I quite like that. Maybe it was wrong, though. Maybe maybe he should have just two deed and dodged off tackle. Honestly, I guess maybe this had like this probably had more upside right for stalling another turn if he pals, if he pals the tackler there and then like tags him and stuff. Then he can get a few back down to stall. I think that's that's what it, that's what I was thinking. So I'm sure that's what <laughs> that's what Elliot was thinking. I like that dodge. And the turn. upside is um, so the upside is also he can make it so he doesn't have to do any dodges as opposed to the other one, which is you're always making a dodge of some kind. Yes. Push. Yes. So. Uh, but I mean, obviously, on this way, you've got to do the dodge to get there. But it's not with the ball, isn't it? Is the thing. Mm-hmm. And uh, yes, uh, Dimmy, hello. That that is something that he didn't do. <laughs> Uh, this is the semi-final, Pedro. This is the first semi-final. In my so defense... The kick skill on one of these players that I just can't yeah, identify, and the, and the uh, UI just doesn't show it very well. Yes. Correct. Okay. <laughs> Correct on all fronts. It's that... It's that... Probably the first one he took on that, or the first or the second one he took on that, on that character there. One of those is kick. <laughs> Believe it or not. You know, it's um, I've played a couple of games of the new rules, and I have found perfect defense or the new perfect defense to be completely, completely worthless. I often am like, I'm just gonna hit end turn. I'm not gonna. There's not. I'm not really getting much by moving players around at all. I no. gained so little by doing it. Yeah, that's um, true. It's a big, big nerf to that. The blitz. Funnily enough, the blitz isn't much of a nerf, is it? But the perfect defense is a big nerf. I actually think a bigger, uh, it's funny, you wouldn't expect it, but I think a way to make perfect defense both more useful but not overpowered and is just say, like, call it like line shift or something, let the people, let the players on the LLS who are marked move. Yeah. So that's actually the whole point of it, right? Is you can just get them out from being hit. That's the whole yeah. point of perfect defense. Yep. Usually. Usually. Yeah, it was weird. And, uh,. Yeah, I mean, the Norse skill reroll on Blitz is pretty huge, but it's not that huge. And it's also, it wasn't really also, intended, right? It was just the way yeah, they wrote helpful. the rules, and it was a byproduct of how they wrote the rules. It was definitely wasn't an intentional thing in any way, shape, or form. No, it was a very... In terms of it was a byproduct of the way they had written the rules with the whole... You can use it on your turn and not calling a Blitz your turn, even though everyone even though it is a turn of action. And then, then, and then they doubled down on it on the in the FAQ, because... Mm-hmm. They double down on bad decisions and then FAQ ones that aren't supported in the rules. That's how, yes, how GW FAQs work. Yeah, yeah, they li- they've literally FAQ things just completely wrongly. Like you know, uh, officious ref. They've just said you can't argue the call for like no reason. They've just FAQ. No, you can't argue the call on officious ref, and it's like there's absolutely no reason for you to not be able to argue the call. You know, in the rules. Like, I don't believe it was a frequently asked question <laughs> because there's absolutely nothing there that would indicate that you couldn't argue the call. And they've just decided, no, you can't argue the call on, on officious ref. It's just stupid. Animal savagery is probably the number one one where it's just like, oh, no, yeah, that's, yeah. none of that creation is supported in the rules um, for how any of the skills work. It's impossible, but all right. Yeah, that's yeah. That's clearly the intent, so sure. Well, at least with it, yeah, officious ref, they, they just said, like, this is the opposite of what's written, right? Yeah. <laughs> There's just absolutely no reason for this, but it happens. Yeah, with with uh, animal savagery, uh, yeah, animal savagery, they just literally, like, they just couldn't work out a way to write it, could they? They couldn't, they couldn't write the rule. So they just said, this happens. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no how <laughs> or, or, or why or anything. Just we're not going to rewrite the rules to make it possible. We'll we'll just say it happens. This is how we want it to work. So this is how it works. Pretty pretty hilarious. The animal savagery one. Hello, flux streamer. <laughs> well, this is a little bit lax in the ball protection department. You kind of have to be at this point. It it. it is a little lax, but also I think it's an okay time not to be doing the cage and just trying to get more players forward and pushing up rather than... Oh, this guy's still around. around. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, this yeah. guy was still too active. I didn't realize. Yeah. But, um, so, yeah, it's fine. Now it's fine. Because it's yeah. much harder for Elliot to go this way <laughs> than it was yeah. to just go straight through the center there. So, yeah. Yeah. It's a hell of a beast, by the way. Look at that block guard, 
claw, stand firm, defensive, like perfect beast basically. I guess you could have plus movement as well, but really nice. Did he just choose seriously heard of about it? I mean, probably. Who who knows? Who knows, the boomer? It's impossible to tell what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> um, this is the view that Elliot plays on, by the way. That it's the thing that being Elliot stream. Uh, he I've likes seen Pinoa this play way. this way too. It does seem to be the way people are starting to move towards playing because it lets you see the entire field at once. Mm -hmm. And I don't think the game looks great this way, but again, being able to see the entire field, which for some reason you just cannot see enough of the field looking um, down the, I guess, the horizontal way. Hmm. Or the vertical right. way, yeah, you just can't quite see it. Yeah, and it, it makes sense, doesn't it? Like this is what, how football and rugby and soccer and uh, sports like that are shown on TV, and it, 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 it Elliot's demonstrating here that you can see the, both the things and that, and you'll sometimes mm -hmm. zoom in. But yeah, you can see everything, and uh, it just fits with the uh, like you know how you how your TV is shaped, isn't it? <laughs> that's, the, yeah. that's the thing. If the TVs reason... were shaped like mobile phones, then it would make sense to play up. <laughs> now there is an argument that TVs are becoming shaped like mobile phones because they are becoming mobile phones. Um, but the only the reason you do the vertical is because of the legacy of American football. But fact is, Plipple doesn't play like American football, and they aren't willing to design the game in such a way that it will play like American football. Well, so, the reason that you have the vertical is because that's how you would sit playing, right? Like, that's yes. the natural way to sit. You have the table across the board, and you face your opponent, and you play. Like, people can play... People could play, like, turn it sideways mm -hmm. and still play opposite each other like this. But it would be really weird to sit next to somebody and play. That would be like the weirdest, most uncomfortable thing yes. I could possibly imagine. <laughs> <laughs> but also with the tabletop setting, you can just walk around the table and get different angles if you need to as well. So having the camera repeat is fine. But I think this is the more. I mean, this is what Fumble has for the default view. It is what also like soccer video games have for the default view mm -hmm. what basketball video games have for the, for the default view because mm -hmm. you, know, you see everything equally um, yeah yeah it's not for madden is it that's that's the thing it is different for madden but yes. tv you know football on the tv is shown like this isn't it yes football yeah madden again that's because fundamentally it's a quarterback game and so you need to be able to see the view from the quarterback side to get the downfield perspective so you have to view it from behind the line of scrimmage you can't view it um with this view. No. It'd be too zoomed out to really see anything. Yeah. Which you could argue this is too zoomed out to see anything, but you know, you do see everything. But also so, it's it's pretty zoomed out. I also out, say it? that, but um tech mobile and stuff it used to be from this view as well, because mm -hmm. you're playing um more like cartoonish style games, um you can get enough information, but with like more realistic style it just becomes too zoomed out to really see what's happening. Mm -hmm. There's a bit of that trouble here, but it's again every it's just I don't know, it's a weird game level three. Every every layer unravels new mysteries. <laughs> it really is. So I guess you blitz the sneaky gate and then just dodge through here. Like that's your only real choice. And then that gives you four turns to turn him over and get to two two, but it's pretty horrible. Maybe Elliot could have reinforced this a little bit more somehow, like a third player here. But then he, he couldn't rely on getting the dodge away from the tentacles. He could have double GFI to this guy, couldn't he? Was this guy here or something? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, double GFI. But then he'd just go through hmm. this guy, so maybe yeah. he couldn't cover it all. And all he has to do is just make him do nothing for one or two more turns. Oh, and I think Elliot's looking at the, uh, do the 5 plus dodge here, and then 2D this guy. Yeah. And then go through that way. That's, that might be better, right, than doing 4-4-3. Four, four, um, well, you know what? This might also be a time where you should be looking at the jump rules. Oh, should yeah. Yeah. Exactly the perfect time to do a jump. Yes, yeah, splits him, and then a 4-3. Oh! <gasps> yeah. Clever squirrel. Yes, this I is totally the whole thing when people are in the jump rules is like, oh yeah, all screens don't work quite the same, but yeah. everyone I think is still adjusting to that that possibility. But this seems the perfect turn for a jump. 
Yeah, Nick did in in, in Nick's quarter final. Um, he he could have done a jump. That was well spotted by somebody. Uh, it could have been De Boomer. I'm not sure. Um, there was a but there was a great opportunity for Nick to do a leap in that game. And is that the blitz? Uh, well, that's that's the incorrect player from Spirit Log. There, he definitely he had to blitz the sneaky get dirty player and then leap. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Also, building a safe cage isn't the goal of the turn. Um, yeah. You need to score. You need to score this turn because you want to have at least four to try and get a counter score. Yeah. To get to OT, which is also worse now than the rules, but <laughs> overtime's always going to be bad. So. I can give him some grace on that. There's no way to make overtime and tie-breaking satisfactory satisfying because it has to eventually just it will eventually no matter what come down to a coin flip at a certain point because you yes. just have to get into an end. Yeah. All right. Well, it wasn't a boomer, but it was it was somebody mentioned it anyway, and it was it was very clever, very clever to do. Well, not a leap, is it a jump? Not a leap. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The new terminology. I guess this way is a chance to make the. Score without rolls next turn, but I don't. I'm not. <laughs> You're also just getting the ball do. hit instantly. <laughs> yeah. Which yeah. is not great. This, I um, had to go for the score there. I will be honest. This is like the kind of play I would do, where I'm like, I just, I don't want to. I'll just try and score in three and have a safer score instead of having to do this four three because I would chicken out, and that's just kind of not understanding to use a football term down the distance. Like you don't have time. You just have to score. You have to do the stupid rolls now. Yeah. Sucks, but you you got down two zero because you failed on your first offense. So, yeah, too bad. Hello today, my name is Fox. Yep, but just just watching it, you know, casting the games is still fun, right? Like it's still, I still I still like Blood Bowl, and uh, Blood Bowl continues it. to be an interesting game to talk about. Yeah, it's great. I I'll always enjoy, you know, thinking about Blood Bowl and talking about Blood Bowl. And I'll probably never enjoy playing it as much as all the other stuff. <laughs> it's, um, Blood Bowl is, uh, kind of like proving the Earth is flat, or round, in terms of complexity. In that you can, anyone can kind of do it, and but it's just hard enough to be satisfying. And interesting. <laughs> there you go. I will be playing the CCL ladder, yes. Uh, I will be playing Blood Bowl 2 ladder uh, in a couple of days' time. But first, first I'm going to catch up on all of the casting, which will be done today, and then I will make the logo for the uh, the final haha. I like that, the last haha instead of the last hurrah. <laughs> Uh, ah! uh, for the high elves, but I don't, know, I don't know. I don't know what the logo is. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to really brainstorm hard to work out what to do for the logo, and then um, and then I shall be playing. You know, then I'll have to, so I'll have to work out what it's gonna be, then do it, and then I'll, then I can play in it. <laughs> Oh, did he not re-roll that? No, he did re-roll it. It's really hard to tell people have used re-rolls, isn't it? Like, God, that was such a great thing, wasn't it, in Blood Bowl 2, like, mm -hmm. with the, the cracked screen and then the rewind and replay. Like, it was so so perfect that it's like... Yeah, this is definitely inherited of the... All the Blood Bowl 1 things that's inherited, the most obvious is it's impossible to tell when someone uses a re-roll. Yeah. <laughs> Which is the same in Blood Bowl 1. You just can't tell. Yeah, like... It was a really good feature, like you know, it's a sports, it's a sports game. It's an instant replay for the reroll. Like that's such a, such a good way of doing it. Yeah, someone had such a little moment of genius there. It was great. Yeah. And um, kind of the opposite of whoever did the stand firm and jump or not icons, because <laughs> I will admit, even after having seen that witch elf use juggernaut i have thought for the entire game it has stand firm. <laughs> yeah i mean i have got used to it um but yes it's obviously not a good idea even even if you can get used to it. like that's the thing like seeing seeing you'll get used to it is such a kind of terrible idiotic thing to come out with because humans would get used to anything wouldn't they 
Elliot's screening here, but it's still just a 4 plus to jump over, isn't it? <laughs> so you definitely want to just jump over this this rock. Yeah, I think the um, that dog sight doesn't need to be one square further up, I believe. Yes, like yeah, yeah. Yeah, but that's to going to happen, I think, for a while because people are just are not used to the jump rules at all. No, yeah, it was a real, real good spot by you there, uh, squirrel. And uh, yeah, that is definitely something to think about. Jumps, the things that jumps unlock. And Elliot, Elliot, funnily, funnily enough, Elliot did a great one in his uh, first round or quarter final where I think it was his first round where he like leapt over the LOS, like he knocked somebody down on the LOS, and then like did two four plus jumps over. To, to, to make an unlikely ball sack like a surprising ball like, really good right Re really cool mm -hmm. that he did that and then Nick Nick really missed a jump um, and yeah obviously it looks like Spirit or Log has missed the jump here because that, would have, that was a 4 plus to hit the ball I mean it was yeah it was a 4 plus yeah, 4 plus jump for a 5 plus dog which yeah I'll have to uh, find out it's more about strange. these boobies it is probably the best new addition to the rule set but it's also the one that doesn't show up very often um it's i don't know in that way it's kind of a nice rule it doesn't show up that often but it is a nice bit of a skill gap increaser and is isn't really getting in the way of anything mm. pretty nice rule change um mm. yeah. or the like as a base rule change it's probably one of the better ones yeah i really i really like it and uh Yes, uh, resurrection today. My name is Fox, and yeah, shtick, yeah, yeah. It was, it was, it was really cool, wasn't it? I mean, maybe it's not for you, <laughs> but, but but for watching, it was, uh, yeah, it was actually really cool. Yeah, thing. So this is looking. I mean, don't say it's over, <laughs> but <laughs> but um, it's pretty over. Yeah, jumps right. are on. He could score really this turn, he, right? Right, Spirit Log could score this turn and then get like a blitz, and and make it two two. So it's not over. Yeah, you need to get a blitz or a uh, riot, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Timeout. It's called now. Yes. Sure. <laughs> yeah, wrestle as if wrestle wasn't already like the premier skill on elves. Now it get now wrestle mm. gets even better. Yeah. It's it's just so interesting because it's um you you you've talked about this before on your streams, but blood bowl is often not blue plated a lot. Aren't necessarily looking at every single option. They're just you know looking knowing patterns and stuff that are good. And jump completely changes how those patterns need to look. Mm. And we're just not used to it yet. So you can't you actually have something new to consider and put into your brain about how you need to look at the field. Yeah. It's really nice. Yeah, it would be it would be great on a better client. <laughs> yeah, and a few thousand games to like, you know, figure out how to play. But here we go. Oh wait, now. what? Oh, he ran out of time. He ran out of time. His time bank's gone. Oh, that's that's a shame. So now you just hit end turn here. Yep. So it's over. So yeah, Elliot just ends turn, and that is it. GG. Yeah, it is odd why they chose the kickoff names. It, there's there's an argument of like uh, international translation translations, isn't there? I remember that being a thing for something. Uh, yeah. That, there were some some words, and I was like, well, why is this thing? And then somebody explained, and it's just something you don't think about, right? If you if you're not if you're not into that sort of thing, it's just yeah. one of those things you just don't think about. There's there's a lot of things like that in in niche or well, not even niche. Just there's just lots of things that a layman wouldn't consider about something, isn't there? <laughs> yeah, like international translations is one of them yeah localization is pretty complicated so just adjusting words a little bit so that the base audience or the presumed audience still gets it but you can localize it more easily is fine mm -hmm. you know you can see localization issues in blood bowl 3 if you want to go look at the team, for example not that it's not plague bearers it's the team that the army that bears the plague <laughs> <laughs> there you go right well, that was a win for Eliod. Um, you know, not against all odds. Obviously, the the elf team is is the team to beat this Nurgle team, and uh, it was very well played by Eliod. So, uh, it was, congrats! It was a to two one result, so Daya will be proud. But it was really a three 0 result. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, yeah, congrats to Eliod. Commiserations to Spirit or Log. 
And thank you very much, Squirrel Dude, for the core commentary. Glorious. No problem. It was nice to watch Bubble 3 and try and learn it all over again. <laughs> for one thing. Yep. It wasn't. <laughs> Thanks for watching, everyone. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. And stay fantastic.